Hey, it's for Marie, and it is April 1st, and that's no fooling. And this is the 23rd episode of Friday Sews. It's a special edition. It is the hashtag so frugal 2022 garment mix reveal. So I hope you will stick around so I can chat about my new tops. In my last Friday Sews video, I gave you a little sneak peek of the fabrics that I had selected for this challenge and this free uh, sewing pattern. Beautiful round shelly in a print and a blue in a medium weight linen. I also showed you a humongous sleeve and I'm wondering if you have guessed what pattern I selected. I'm going to move her over just a tiny bit for this challenge. If you haven't, I did get this pattern through Mood Fabrics. I will link the website in the description box. You're probably well aware of this company that sells amazing um, designer fabrics and dead stock fabrics, etc. They have a online shop and then I think they're in Los Angeles, New York, and they may have another location. But this is the humongous sleeve and the blouse is called the caraway blouse. So that's what I decided to make. Um, I thought that it would be kind of fun and casual and simple for spring and carrying into the summer. Now this, as far as the size, I think it's very inclusive. It starts at a double zero and goes all the way down to size 32. Now the one thing I did note in printing this at home on my own printer is that there was a lot of paper waste. Why? Because all of these sizes are on the pages and I actually cut a 10. So there may have been a tiny bit of the pattern on, you know, a page or two that I, I needed only like a snippet of that section, if that makes sense. I think that maybe in the future they might want to consider two different sizes, maybe going from the double zero to the 14, which would give nine size ranges, and then doing the size 16 to the 32, also giving nine size ranges, so that there might be less uh, printing, paper waste, etc. So that's just the first thing, but I am grateful for the free pattern. So no complaints, just uh, constructive maybe suggestions. So let's look at the sleeve, it's pretty simple. The uh, wrists are elasticized, and so that's a no-brainer for most of us. Sewist, and even for a beginner, it would be pretty simple. It's just a self-casing with the fabric, and you measure wrists, and I think you add an inch, and then you just insert it and stitch. So that is basically the finish on the sleeve edge. I think this definitely could be altered if you wanted to make it uh, bracelet length or maybe below the elbow or above the elbow or even shorter. Um, obviously you're going to have a lot of gathering at the shoulders all the way to the back. There's lots and lots of gathering as you can see. So you have to have a little bit of patience with that and then you just ease it into the arm side and stitch and finish. I finished with a bias binding to make it neat and clean on the inside, and I will insert pictures of that as well. Next, with elastic, you can see that it's at the waist. I would say this is high, a high waist placement, and the flounce is short. In maybe the next, if I make this again, this would certainly be easy to alter or uh, make into a dress. Definitely, you would just extend this and go all the way down. But I'm, I'm noting that it's, it's sitting high on the waist. 
I'm thinking that's probably intentional. I did not adjust the little flounce. Maybe in the future I might take it down a little bit. You can see it's it's uh, you can see the pockets of my pants here. So that was just a casing. And now the casing goes on the inside, which I did for the viscose. You can see it's on the inside. But on the linen top, I decided to showcase that on the outside with top stitching. So it was intentionally placed on the outside. So that was one hack that I did. And I like that. I like how it turned out. Uh, one thing that I will suggest if you're doing this is interface. Interface the casing and the yolks. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier, especially because they are recommending really fine, lightweight fabrics like Batiste, uh, I think Chiffon, and Slinky fabrics, even the Rayon. It was so much easier working with and aligning that casing uh, with an interface faced piece on the actual garment. So this is what the casing looks like and you would cut two on fold. So one is placed uh, on the front, the other is placed on back with the elastic measured to the waist. Yeah, and then stitching in those seams, the side seams with French seams. So that's kind of a tip and strategy again because I was talking about interfacing the yokes, I'll go ahead and show you those pattern pieces. This is the um, back yoke, cut two on the fold. You have a nice finish on the inside of the garment with the fabric, and then the same with the front. So this would be this yoke right here. Um, again, I interfaced. I interfaced not only with the rayon, Shelly, but also with the linen, even though this was a medium weight, I just wanted to have a little more structure in this area and I'm glad I did. Continuing on with discussing the neckline, um, this basically is a nice curved yoke and if I've got it placed correctly, okay, it'll go over like this. joining the front yoke like that. So what I decided to do is leave it the curve visible. You can see it better on my solid blouse. As opposed to the way it was designed, you would be sewing it together like so. Um, I don't know. I just felt that that was going to be tight around the neck possibly bulky and it even said to sew it uh, with French seams. I decided I wanted to really to do some top stitching on this and show off that curve and have that neckline a little bit open. Now interesting enough, enough I have read a most recent comment from a sewist who is also sewing this garment and I actually want to read it to you. Okay so Diane writes on March 12th. Now Going back, actually, this pattern was released to the public in November 2021, so it hasn't been out there that long. There was one person who commented back in November saying she was excited and couldn't wait to sew the pattern. But I just noticed a recent comment on March 12th of this year, uh, and Diane writes, I loved the neck design on this blouse, but really struggled with those unclear directions. A sketch would be easier to view than the floral fabric. So it was on a kind of a busy fabric and it might have been hard for her to see. Uh, and, I've, and I've been sewing for 50 years, exclamation mark, yikes. I realized that the yoke attaches over the front of the blouse, not above. And she wrote, and the notch mentioned in instruction number 15 um, is the notch on the front neck or front yoke, not the back facing. She's basically saying she's gonna try it again. Uh, nobody responded to her as of yet, and we are in the very last week of March. Um, but I can say 
that I definitely can relate to what she's talking about. I really struggled with this section as well. Um, and I'm gonna look really quick at uh, instruction number 15. Let me just check it out really quick. Because everything else is pretty, it's very um, short and concise writing. Uh, I'm assuming maybe the mood fabric pattern designers or instructional writers assume that we all have some sewing knowledge. Um, but number 15 says, now stitch the shoulder seams together to the notch using a French seam. Okay, again, I struggle, and, and it is hard to see the because of the floral print. I struggled a little bit too with that. And you know, I'm gonna just say, I would definitely recommend putting the garment on and pinning the yoke and adjusting the front to where you feel it fits comfortably and there's some movement uh, because you do have to slip this top over your head. So that's basically what I did. And then, you know, when I was tweaking and playing with that, I just decided, you know what? I think let's just put the, you know, emphasize this curve and, and, and make it more of a detail on the outside of the blouse. So, uh, yeah, I probably should respond and just say, hey, you know, this is what I did. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we'll wait and see if someone from Mood will respond to Diane's comment. And then last but not least, if you are wondering about fabric requirements, first of all, what they showed is a high grow viscose crepe and it's a floral fabric and it is almost sold out. There's only one yard left of that. But, um, the small and medium and any other types of fabric that you're thinking of using would require approximately uh, three yards, three yards. And then if you're in the large to extra large size range, anywhere from three and a half yards to four yards of fabric. So it definitely takes a lot of fabric. And I don't know uh, width wise on this because it is now not showing um, fabric width because that fabric is pretty much sold out. Elastic, 25 inch uh, or like a fourth of an inch width, you only need approximately, I would say, it says one yard, but you're gonna need the elastic for the wrist and the waist. So actually, you're gonna need between a yard to two yards of elastic, so yeah. That's gonna be about it on the details on this blouse. It's the Caraway. I hope you sew it or try it. And I, I think it would be really fun, like I said, to elongate this and make it into a flowy dress, but that's gonna take a lot of fabric, right? I did make one additional free pattern garment for the hashtag so frugal 2022 challenge and it is for a child and I'm gonna talk about that in my next video and I actually have a detailed sew along for that one. So I'm gonna finish uh, editing the video so if anybody wants to try that one, it's really a fun one and I hope that you uh, entered your mix into this Instagram challenge that was hosted by Ruan and Sam. I'll link their channels. They certainly don't need me to promote their channels. They're doing amazing things and have a huge subscribership, but I'm so appreciative, appreciative of what they've done. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you post on Instagram and what you're sewing. So until next time, I will see you in the sewing room.